Hi, good afternoon, good evening. How are you all? Welcome back to the reading practice session. Am I audible to all of you? Good afternoon, Shivali. All right, thank you. So let's begin today's session. I'll share my screen and you will see the questions over there. You have to solve the reading writing questions first and you will get two and a half minutes to solve each question. Then you have to post your answers in the chat box. And the most important thing is to listen very, very attentively to the discussion part which follows thereafter. Make sure you have some pen and paper. If you are lying down, please get up and sit down actively. Bring some pen and paper to take notes. And I will be more than happier if all of you will time yourself and all of you will take notes so that you can revise those things before your exam. And please feel free, don't hesitate to ask your questions. The more you will participate, the better you will learn. So try that you take the maximum benefit out of the classes. Give me a minute and I'll share the screen. Okay. So here you have your first question on the screen. Two and a half minutes to solve this and then post your answers in the chat box and make sure that you are timing yourself. So your time starts now.
okay should be done i think i should decide some sort of punishments as well for you those who have selected way as the first answer decide a punishment for yourselves if you have one water bottle will you say i have different water bottle one is different or only plural things can be different i keep on repeating every day that singular plural and positive negative are two such criteria which you cannot ignore in any question whether you feel it fits or you don't feel it fits it will always fit so what is the first answer all of you do you want to amend it you have 20 seconds to do it So Pablo was born on October twenty five in Spain, and for nearly eighty of his ninety one years, he made art using different approaches. There is no means that you can select a singular answer here because different can be only multiple things. A singular thing cannot be called different. So please make it a note, those who haven't, that you will always check singular, plural, and positive, negative before finalizing these. answers no adjectives to be used in the past art historians revered him as a king of god calling him a genius for having invented cubism which dashed to influence the art of the 21st century which century are we in which century is this that we are living in i have got a as the answer c as the answer which century is it 21st na then how can we select had or have shouldn't it be simple present tense because 21st century is still going on we are currently living in the 21st century so do you want me to go into the exam with you to ask you these questions and then you can select your answers and change them so cubism is singular we need a verb with s and because the 21st century is the current century we are living in we need simple present tense in this case so make a note of these things that you will always check the tense before deciding your answer dash between two commas that means we need a connector and whenever we need a connector you have to interpret the information of the previous sentence and the one with the blank to understand the meaning only then we can fit the connector so if we look at the options maybe is not a connector still also doesn't come between two commas anyways is not a formal word this was easy because however is the only academic formal word that we use as a connector out of the given options otherwise why we are using however here is because we were comparing what used to be the case and what today is the case and whenever we compare in two opposite sides however today scholars are taking a more nuanced approach means this approach is different than the previous one so whenever two things are compared in a contrasting manner we always use however in that case they note that picasso didn't come up with the cubism on his own he collaborated with french artists and both of them built on the work of the 19th century artists named this and that scholars are also calling attention to picasso's evident misogyny which historians had previously brushed dash Now note this in your collocation list. Brush, uh, brushed aside is a collocation. Brushed aside's meaning is to ignore something, to not pay attention to something. So that is called brushed aside. So please make a note in your collocation list, everyone. Picasso's dash R worth celebrating. So R tells us the answer has to be plural. When we look at the options, there is only one plural option. So there is nothing that we need to discuss about the last blank. This is again based on singular and plural. Let me see what I have got. Yeah, this one is better. Good, well done, Subanya. So these are the answers. The first one, it we just needed plural answer, so we'll go with approaches. The second one continues. because we are referring to what are they saying calling him a genius for having invented cubism which continues to influence continues means from a long period of time and still in the present time it is continuing uh, okay somebody is asking why cannot we put is continuing because is continuing will only mean present tense that right now it is doing something for example if i say john is writing a letter 
what does this convey john is currently at this point of time he is writing a letter it has nothing to do with was he writing before as well so that is why we cannot go with is but when we say cubism continues to influence means it is influencing from a long period of time so we have to take past till the 21st century right second third one is however that's the only formal connector uh, if we uh, actually look at the four options so there's no choice that we have and the fourth one is a collocation test brushed aside is a collocation and the last one again based on um singular plural so that is achievements brush down doesn't mean uh, ignore let me check brush aside means uh, ignore brush down doesn't mean ignore anybody who knows the meaning of brush down no brush down is to make someone or yourself tidy that is related to cleanliness right what else with two comes first form of verb yes two comes with first form of verb which blank china which question or uh, which blank number the second one no that's after two china so if the blank is after two then we have to go with first form of verb not before two that rule is not before two so influence is already first form of verb because this word comes after two so they have already used the verb we here wanted to refer to cubism with the verb so cubism which dash to influence so cubism which uh, continues to influence because it is it was it is and till the 21st century it will be continuing that's it anybody else any question all good with this one make sure that you are trying your best that you are scoring better than what you scored yesterday okay so that's a challenge for all of you with your own self question number 2 on your screens 2 and a half minutes to solve this and then post your answers please
right should be done let's start the discussion and this one is very well done while exercising the body requires more energy than it produces dash aerobic respiration or the intake of oxygen so we can discuss the meanings of all these four options that we have along is used when we want to say with something for example i will go to market along with my friend so along means you are accompanying someone so that is along or along is also used when you want to say i go for a walk along the river that is side by side something across is used for place um covid 19 spread across the world so across means everywhere in that area so that is across over is generally used with time period or with position like the plane flies over the houses or um i have been living in australia uh over the last 10 years so with time period and through is used when you have a method or a way written after it so aer aerobic respiration is the method through which our body gets the energy our inner uh, body produces the energy so the body requires more energy than it can produce through aerobic respiration because aerobic respiration is the process by which we produce energy or the intake of oxygen to create enough energy for movement the body goes through another process which is anaerobic respiration to create enough energy means the required level to match the required level of energy for what do we have to require the energy for movement what kind of movement our body needs energy strong and weak do we describe the body movements as strong and weak that walking is a weak movement and running is a strong movement do we do like this severe is used when you want to say very much how do we use the word severe is i am having severe headache means very much beyond the limit that is severe it is used in a negative way when you want to say severe thunderstorm warning have you seen the weather application on your iphones it's very common in australia severe thunderstorm warning so severe it is positive it's never used in a positive way showing showing is not a word to describe any kind of movement but yes vigorous is a type of movement vigorous is used when you want to say something which contains a lot of energy or something which requires a lot of energy is called vigorous so that is why they said to create enough energy for vigorous movement vigorous means which are a bit higher level movements for example for walking walking is not a vigorous movement it's a normal movement but running or exercising or gymming they are vigorous movements because the the body exhausts more so body requires more uh, energy to do those so that is called vigorous movement this type of energy production burns sugars without oxygen producing lactic acid within exerted muscles dash muscles and a build up of lactic acid are what cause the pain associated with exercising so these two things what kind of muscles and built up of lactic acid are the cause of pain overworked normal but this should be negative because you are you are having pain normal muscles cannot cause pain muscles are never overloaded or exceed is to cross in quantity so we'll go with overworked this also is a common thing when you go to gym or you do some kind of exercise that's a normal working uh, of our muscles than the usual days so overworked muscles and the build up of lactic acid are the cause of pain associated with exercising when heat is applied to a sore area of the body blood vessels widen and blood flow increases to dash excess excess lactic acid and other toxins away from tired muscles so when we look at the um, grammar with two comes first form of verb so they say the blood vessels they get widened and the flow of blood increases why do these things happen to dash the lactic acid and other toxins away from the tired muscle so we need a word which can show movement movement of lactic acid away from the muscles so that can be convey lactic acid away so convey is convey the message transport we use the word transport for the movements in our body we say that g uh, what is it the signals electrical signals are transported or transmitted whenever we talk about flow of things by the use of blood we say transportation of minerals and water inside the body 
we cannot say conduct lactic acid away from muscles conduct does not show movement conduct is arrangement for example um, i am responsible for conducting the meeting i am responsible for conducting the class so conducting has no movement into it and provide also does not show any movement but transport shows movement of one thing to another uh, area these muscles are also made more elastic by the heat and nerve endings dash to block pain signals okay there was a comma that means there's a different part starting these muscles are also made more elastic by the heat that's one part and nerve endings dash to block pain signals but they are the part of the same sentence so we have to follow the same tense what tense they have used is uh, are with third form of verb so we also have to go with present tense with third form of verb so would are with ing is not what we need only present tense is not what we need but r plus ed is what we need so that is why our answer will be are stimulated nerve endings are stimulated to block pain signals now why do i sometimes explain you in this silly manner that you can just look at what uh tens they are using and you can just copy the same because these are the ways of time management every time i understand it that it might not be possible to actually check grammatical understanding that when do we use would when do we use r plus ing what kind of sentences we go with r plus ed so if you are if you feel that you are not so good in grammar that you can every time check them contextually so these are the kind of time saving tips that i try to include that if you have time then you can check your active passive thing but if in case you are at a situation in the exam that you don't have time then at least you should have a backup plan that okay i can just check and i can find my answer so these are the things you need to note down so that when you sit in the exam you have a long list of options i can use this i can use that i can try this method or that method only then it's going to be finished within time right so note down the use of all these four options overcomes with time and position through with method or way across with place and along with means with something side by side something movements in our body are not classified as strong or weak but it can be normal or vigorous movements muscles cannot exceed or overload but yes they can overwork because the context is about exercising So when you go for exercising and the day you do not go for exercising then your muscles are overworked on the day of exercising movement of minerals or anything inside in our body we can use the word transport because it conveys movement and the last one muscles are made nerve endings are stimulated so you have to follow the same writing style we use for plus verb plus ing then why do not use in second one where is the second one no this is not a rule karam ji that you have to use for see the rule is after for comes ing form of verb do we need a verb here do we need a verb so when we don't need a verb how can this rule apply so it's you have to first check the first rule is always to check whether i need a noun verb adjective or adverb only then any other rule can apply after that if you miss the first rule you will always mess up with the rules you will keep on messing up with the rules here and there if you don't check what do you need noun verb adjective or adverb so because we need adjective here we should not even think about the rules of verbs right any other confusion anyone all right so here you have your question number 3 on the screen two and a half minutes to solve this and then post your answers
it should be done. Let's start the discussion. Please post your answers if you haven't. Dash of Asia's greatest rivers spring to life in the Himalayas. And these are the names of a few among them. So they say among them means there are more also. We are just naming three. So some of the rivers, a few of the rivers, a few is when we want to say not many. So when we want to write a negative sentence without using not, then we say a few. Little and much are used for uncountable nouns. So you can note it down for yourself. These are used with uncountable. But rivers can be counted. So there's no possibility that C and D can be the answers because we can count the number of rivers. And we don't want to frame a negative sentence here. So we will not go with a few. For example, a few is there are only a few students in the class. So when you want to say there are not many students, then you say a few. Right. So here there's not a negative sentence. We'll say some of the rivers that spring to life in the Himalayas. The peaks, foothills and plains are host to species such as these tiger, panda, bears and perhaps even this and that. And now we at World Wildlife Fund, WWF, can add to that list. Our recent report reveals that no dash than 244 plants, 16 amphibians, 16 reptiles, 14 fish, 2 birds and 2 mammals, and at least 16 vertebrates dashed by scientists in the Himalayas over the past 10 years. So what we have, we have than here. So before than, we always go with second form of verb. So let's see how many second forms we have. Hardly and mostly are adverbs. Words that end with ly are called adverbs. Fewer and smaller are second forms of verbs. Smaller is used in terms of size and fewer is used in terms of quantity, number of something. 244 plant, 16 amphibians, we are not talking about big or small, but we are talking about quantity. So we'll go with fewer. So it's uh, no fewer than these many plants, reptiles, fish, mammals, and at least 60 vertebrates, invertebrates, dash by scientists. So before by always comes ed form of verb. And the sentence finishes that by scientists over the past 10 years. So we have to match our answer with the time period. Is cannot come because our noun is plural. There are so many birds, so many plants. So we cannot say is discovered. Have been is possible because have comes with plural. And have always shows starting from a past time and running till the present. And are only shows present tense. So whenever we talk about past 10 years, we cannot go with simple present tense because are doesn't convey anything related to past. So we have to go with have been because have been shows, been means continuity, have means present tense. So it shows both past to present time period. The Himalayan range is home to some 12,000 species of plants, mammals, birds, reptiles, and fish. The number of new species discovered and investigated and dashed by WWF. So they are using third form of verb. We will also follow third form of verb. We have to demonstrate it and verify it. Other two are not even possible. So we are talking about species. Discovered means they have found it. Investigated means they have tried to find information about those species. And dashed by WWF is the organization, World Wildlife Fund. They already explained the name. So the organization will demonstrate the species or they will verify the species. The demonstration means to, like in the exhibition, we demonstrate things. We put them on display. Uh, to be shown and explained is called demonstrated. But we'll go with verified because this organization doesn't go and show the species to everybody and explain that. But they verify that whatever we, because unless and until an organization verifies, anything cannot be printed in the books that, okay, there are these many species, unless it is verified. Otherwise, everybody will say, I have seen this in that forest. I have seen four new species in that forest. So new findings, new discoveries are to be verified by some organizations. Only then they can be accepted by the world. So um, investigated by WWF in the Eastern Himalayas between 1998 and 2008, equates to 35 signs every year. They remind us that dash our advances in knowledge. We can still be surprised, says the person, Mark Wright. They remind us that even though our advances, so... 
regardless our expense uh, advances even with even with doesn't make sense because um, this is kind of a, a contrasting statement uh advances means advancement so we have made ad advancements in our knowledge but there are still surprises means there are still few things that we don't know so we have a contrast whenever we have a contrast in the same statement with a comma in between we always go with despite or even though and both of these are very clear uh, there are very clear differences between them even though comes when we have a subject plus verb and despite comes when you only have the subject or the noun only one thing it can be called a noun or it can be called a subject but there is no verb in the case so when you look at this dash our advances in knowledge there is no verb before the comma so we have to go with despite because the rule of even though is there should be a noun plus a verb otherwise even though cannot come right so if you if you will care, carefully analyze the questions that you do you will realize that every blank has a basis of english language that they check so that's why it is called an it's a very good exam actually that it only judges an exact level of knowledge that you require to read english to write english to speak english like do you know collocations do you know tenses do you know active passive do you know bit of vocabulary do you know how connectors conjunctions prepositions are used so everything has a basis so that's why i keep on saying that if you will start from the right thing if you will start working on your basis not too much average level of knowledge if you will try to gain the solving of the questions is definitely going to become very very easy because when you will you know if you know this rule when you will look at this blank you will be happier in the exam oh this i know how to find out and that happiness will give you motivation and positivity and encouragement and that will impact your performance ahead as well so these are the answers little and much go with uncountable things or if you go with negative uh, thing when you want to say something is not many then we say a few but here it's a positive statement so we can go with some of the reverse here in the himalayas and then before by we need ed form but we have to always read till the full stop so that we don't miss any information uh, let's see if you only read till by scientist then you might get confused or oh, should i put are or should i put have both are present tenses and that is wastage of time that's it so if you read till the full stop you will come to know that i have to justify this time period as well and whenever we talk about past till present we have to go with have or has dash by an organization so species are not shown or explained by organization to anyone but yes it is verified by organizations uh despite and even though even though comes when you have a noun plus verb and despite comes when there is only noun so that's a difference you can find this in the grammar videos as well explained very well there they is subject no advance is the verb advances sorry advances is the noun advances means advancements and also you should know the rule that uh, after possessive pronoun always comes a noun so if it is written after possessive pronoun our it has to be a noun otherwise advances means advancements despite does not contain pronouns no prabhu so that was not the case uh it is only subject plus verb noun plus verb or only nouns i might have said that uh, despite comes with a continuous form of verb for example despite comes with despite having done the work it won't come with when they say despite they have done the work if that is the verb have is the verb there then you have to go with even though because then noun plus verb both are requirements are filled there go through it once again you'll understand so we see after yeah despite she is having because it is ing form of verb then we'll go with despite so we see after the blank normally despite is the first word in the blank it's very rare that it comes in the middle so you have to see before the full before the comma after the blank and before the comma you have to check whether you have a verb or not 
All right. Okay, the fourth question, and you have two and a half minutes to post your answers.
okay should be done good well attempted so the first statement is a fact they're giving a definition of what is the meaning of aggression aggression is any behavior that dash toward injuring harming or inflicting pain or another living being or group of beings so this is a definition the meaning of aggression and definitions or facts are always given in present tenses so there's no point that we can go with past tense so the first thing is you have to eliminate both the past options and now is directed or is conducting so again facts or definitions are not in ing form so we'll go with is directed if you did not get your answer by this you could have uh, still got your answer based on the tense that they are using is categorized is intended so we have to follow the same style because the other sentences are also giving definitions so what is the definition of hostile aggression what is the definition of instrumental aggression so while giving definition what tense they are using we can copy the same as well then they say aggression is also categorized dash its ultimate intent so when we use the word categorize means putting something into categories how do we put something into categories do we say uh, for example if you want to say um, according to the size there are four categories of plants so you categorize something according to a basis according to colors i have four categories of clothes so when you categorize something you have some basis on which you are making the different categories you will never say on behalf of size there are four types of plants not possible right including size there are four types of plants in agreement comes with in agreement with something so the three words should be together only then we use in agreement with so the answer here is according to because they said aggression is categorized according to intent means intent is the basis upon which we can or based on which we can cate make categories of aggression so now they are explaining those categories hostile aggression is an aggressive act that dash from anger and is intended to inflict pain or injury because of that anger now here is an aggressive act act is singular we need a verb with s and that verb should match with the word from if there is any verb without s we should first eliminate that now happens from happens from it's a very rare use that we use happens and from together occurs is used for natural phenomenon like drought occurs uh, tsunami occurred so natural phenomenon is when we use the word occur with something and here we can say this type of aggression results from anger so is an this is an aggressive act that results from anger and is intended to inflict pain or injury because of that anger results from means comes out of then they are explaining the second type instrumental aggression is an aggression act that is regarded as a dash to an end other than pain or injury so this you should be noting down in your list of phrase as a means to an end is a phrase these words always come together means to an end is a phrase which conveys something which might not have importance in itself but it is a useful thing to do so that is when we use uh, a means to an end so here it is said that um, instrumental aggression is an aggression that is regarded as a means to an end means it has other implications other useful things other than pain or injury or other effects than pain or injury so as a means to an end for example an enemy combatant may be subjected to torture in order to extract useful intelligence so see so doing torture is otherwise not important or valuable but it is useful so that is when this phrase is used as a means to an end means the thing might not be good but it has useful uh, implications then in the end we see a number of theories and models of aggression dash to explain these diverse forms of behavior so a number of theories and models means our noun is plural so we cannot go with any verb which goes with singular noun so have can come with plural are can come with plural came to light we don't really need past tense because our whole of the topic is in present tense so we cannot say came to light jump up theories and models don't jump up that's not an academic way to use with word to use with theories and models 
So theories and models are appearing or theories and models have origin. So we cannot go with ING form because they are not right now appearing in front of us. But we can simply say that there are lots of theories and models that have come up to explain these diverse forms of behavior. So have come up means have arisen. They, these are possible that we can see in books, that we can find in books. So there are lots of things that have come up that have arisen. So tenses are uh, very, very important to find out um, a statement is a fact, a statement is uh, a definition, a statement is based on which tense before you can finalize your answer. The first one is, is directed because there's no chance we can go with uh, past tense or we can go with ing because it's a definition. Definitions either come with simple present tense or any form of present tense, but avoiding ing form. When we categorize things, we don't categorize on behalf of, we categorize according to a basis. Third one occurs, goes more with natural phenomena like tsunami, floods and drought. You can make an example for yourself. The results word comes with the word from. And as a means to an end is a phrase, which means something might not be important or valuable, but it is useful. So then you have, they have given us the example also that what do they want to say with as a means to an end. And the last one, number of theories and models have come up. So come up can be have arisen. Any confusions, anyone in this particular question? See, happen and occur um, are very similar. Occurs is when there's a blind chance of something. Or you can say absolutely no chance of something. And you say occur like tsunami or maybe an accident occurred. Um, what happened is when there were a few chance, there were few hints that some this kind of thing can happen. So those hints were ignored and that's why that thing happened. So a few hints that could be used to find out the possibility. That's when we use happen. Otherwise, they're very similar. Came to light is past tense, Shivam. Came is past, so you cannot go with past tense here. The whole of the context is in present tense. It can be have come to light, then it's fine. Right? <clears throat> so facts are always written in simple present tense. For example, the sun rises in the east. It's a fact. It always comes with rises. Never comes with is rising, was rising, risen or rose. So facts are always in simple present tense. Definitions are also in present tense. Like this was a definition of aggression. But it can sometimes take the form of um, is plus ed form. Because we have to use the way of writing. If it's very long, we might have to explain it with is or are, are plus ed form. But never past tense. So always present tense will be there. Avoiding ing because ing shows currently happening. Definitions are not currently happening. They are basic. Okay, the last question for reading, writing blanks and you have two minutes, two and a half minutes to post your answers.
do we use the word guidance for news channels or newspapers do we say newspapers guide us or news channels guide us then what do teachers do teachers influence us guidance is more of like helping you in deciding something or um helping you about the future course of action very similar but we cannot use guidance for news channels because guidance is customized for every different student i might have a different plan of action that is guidance but news channels newspapers media they don't guide us edmund burke called the press the fourth estate of the realm i think he did not use this title for the press thoughtlessly as social ruling group of class the three estates or realms in england which were one two and three the press has been called the fourth estate as it also constitutes a ruling group or class like the lords and commons the sentence is absolutely complete press has been called called is a verb so we need adverb here something with ly so the first thing we can eliminate is appropriate because we need ly happily or sadly is not the topic here properly or improperly can we say we are properly calling uh, the press the fourth state or we are not properly calling the press as the fourth state it's whether it is right to call press the fourth state or not because they said this person uh, called the press the fourth state so was he right in naming press as the fourth state or not that is rightly called means just it is justified that he did the right thing by calling press the fourth state because it also constitutes a ruling group or class like the lords and commons it cannot be denied in a free country that the press exercises good deal of dash in shaping public opinion so when you watch something in the news or newspaper continuously uh if they're saying good positive about a thing and we repeatedly say newspaper is also saying positive about that person or a thing uh the media any form of media is also talking positive so some at one point of time we also start to accept that okay might be this person is good or this thing is good this is beneficial for the society so it is they influence our opinions influence means they have the power to uh, if we are on at 40% then the by looking at the media or the news we can come to 60% 70% of something that is influencing we cannot say control because control would be very strong to say that whatever i do or whatever decision i take um, whatever my opinion is it is con completely controlled by media if the media will say yes i will also say yes that's that's very rigid point of view and guidance is more of help and media houses they don't help us in our personal affairs but they can influence our thought process what they show it has an impact on us what they write has an impact on us so we get influenced by the media so uh, press exercises good deal of um, influence in shaping public opinion and dash out the weaknesses of society so what verb they are using is ing form of verb shaping opinion and dash the weakness so we'll also go with ing form of verb and that verb should match with the word out and pointing out is a collocation we don't say disclosing with out or marking out or denoting out but point out say so point out to the right uh thing so pointing out is a collocation these two words go together weaknesses of the society or of government and in general bringing to dash all those good or bad things in society which would have otherwise remained unnoticed bring to something phrase bring to light is a phrase bring to light simply means to uncover something to disclose something which otherwise if the press doesn't tells us we might not come to know so they bring to light means they make us aware about something or they disclose something this is again a phrase in the press instead of being controlled by anyone controls life and thought of a nation dash the press constitutes an estate by itself so what we started with is what we are finishing at we said that this person called press the fourth estate and then we gave justification of why this person called the press the fourth estate and in the end we are saying hence proved so you can always um, 
take a hint for yourself that when to use hence is when you conclude everything that you started a topic then you gave your arguments in favor of that topic and in the end you finally prove your point that is when we say hence proved so in the end we are saying hence the press constitutes an estate constitutes means we are admitting that okay press is an estate by itself so that is always when we use hence when you can remember it with hence proved will be easy for you to recall uh, where is hence used right so although doesn't come with a comma otherwise however and moreover come with a comma moreover is when you give a new point and however is when you give the opposite point here this sentence is not giving a new point or an opposite point it is concluding the whole story that that is why whatever we this person said it is right so proving the point is called hence So these are the answers. The first one is rightly. Good prop. This is called confidence, and we have to keep confidence on ourselves. It's very important. Rightly, because uh, we cannot say we are happy or sad about calling press fourth state, or we are properly calling or not properly calling, because it's not about pronunciation. With pronunciation, we can say okay, this is not the right pronunciation or the proper way of saying. But rightly is whether doing this is right or wrong. Second one, media does not control us, and media never guides us, but media influences us in general life also. Point out is a collocation. Bring to light is a phrase, and hence is when you prove your point of view by giving your arguments, and in the end you say hence proved. So hence, press is an estate. Right? Any questions, anybody? All good with this one. Okay, let's begin with reorders. Here's the first question. You have two minutes to post your answers, please. Very good. How are all of you so intelligent in reorders today? What's the secret? I'm surprised. 
First sentence is C because here we introduce the topic. The first systems of writing developed and used by the Germanic people were runic alphabets. So this is where we introduce the first system of writing is called runic alphabets. Then we give further explanation. Always the second uh, sentence further explains what you said. So here you just said runic alphabets. Now explain what are alphabets. The runes functioned as letters. That's the same thing as alphabets. But they were much more than just letters in the sense in which we today understand the term. So we are saying they were just like letters, but they were more than letters. So more than letters, what were they more than letters? So we have to explain more than letters, what was their function? Each rune was an ideographic or pictographic symbol of some cosmological principle or power. And to write a rune was to invoke and direct the force for which. This is the explanation. Why are we saying that they were that one letter of the rune, they were more than a letter. It was more than a letter because every rune had this and that and that thing. And indeed is when you want to kind of reassure something. You said something and then you are saying it again with more significance, more importance. Indeed, in every German language, the word rune means both letter and secret or mystery and its original meaning which likely predated the adoption of the runic alphabet may have been simply message. So this is again, they are saying that every word, it was more than just one meaning. Every word rune means both letter and secret. There were, there's more to just having one meaning. So I believe one, two and two and three were very well connected. One was obvious because you will first introduce the topic. And you will say they were just like letters, but more than letters. Why are we saying they are more than just letters? Because they have this pictographic symbol, ideographic symbol, cosmological principle, whatever. And then just re-saying that in every German language, this means both this and that and that. Right? A lot of you have got a full score. I'm very surprised. Good. Well done. Okay, question number two, and you have two minutes to post your answers.
what happened here this was very easy there were hints let me mark the hints and try again you have also here you have however here and then they say the two epics there were so easy hints so the first was d considered among the greatest works of western literature because considered among the greatest works there will be so many great works and then you are picking up your topic out of so many that out of the greatest works of western literature then we have the iliad paired with its sequel the odyssey is attributed to homer I means these are the two works we are going to talk about out of all the works all the great works of the western literature this is called introduction where are you taking your topic out from so my topic is these two works what are they they are one of the greatest works of western literature this is called introduction then then the second one should be e when they say however that the author of the iliad was not the same as the compiler of the fantastic tales in odyssey is arguable on several scores so first of all you will say that there are differences that's why e comes at number 2 right so when you say the author that the author of the iliad was not the same as the compiler of the tales in odyssey this is arguable on several scores means several bases basically and then you uh, give the what are the differences between them so here we have in their physical structure also they display an equally pronounced difference so also this is the difference will come after we have given the first difference so we need to find out where is the first difference so here b is number 3 where they say the two epics belong to different literary types iliad is essentially dramatic in confrontation of opposing warriors who converse like the actors while the odyssey is cast as a novel narrated in more everyday human speech this is where the differences start also there is a difference in their physical structure also the two epics display an equally pronounced difference so what is the difference in the physical structure is given in a the odyssey is composed in six distinct cantos of four chapters means four books basically each whereas the iliad moves unbrokenly forward with only one irrelevant episode in its title this is a physical structure there were episodes or books or whatever so the clear hints also this is the difference means give the difference before this also and then difference in the physical structure we just said there is a difference in physical structure so this is called just saying and the next sentence will follow the explanation what is the difference in the physical structure that you just talked about that will be the explanation and before that we will say what are the two things these are the greatest works of literature but they are different from each other on many bases and then you start giving the differences one by one you didn't get the idea why however in the last however is not in the last why are you putting however in the last is there a rule that however comes at the last what am i explaining herpal i'm saying you will first say that these two are not same on several bases only then you will start giving the differences first you will say okay there are many differences between a and b the first difference is this the second difference is this third difference is this you cannot first talk about the differences and then you say but there are many differences in both of them we cannot say this at the end we have to say this before giving the differences right not a good attempt in this one though it was an easy question not a difficult one okay let's try in number 3 2 minutes to solve this and post your answers
okay i marked the hints to help you but still though you don't want to look at them i think the good thing is you've got the first sentence correct because the definitions or um, you can say definitions always come at number 1 this is a definition that what is a concussion concussions are brain injuries that occur when a person receives a blow to the head face or neck so that this is the definition of concussion then the psychological problems we need to first talk about that there are psychological problems however long term effects so we should we need to talk about short term effects first what are we left with this although most people who suffer a concussion experience initial bouts of dizziness and this say recent studies suggest that people who suffer multiple concussions so first let please explain about what happens when you suffer one concussion and then go on to what happens when you suffer multiple concussions so although most people who suffer a concussion experience initial bouts of dizziness nausea and drowsiness these symptoms disappear after a few days short term effects however the long term effects of concussions are less understood and far more severe always justify conjunctions guys it's very easy to solve reorders wherever you have a connector wherever you have these problems now these problems first of all we need to talk about problems that there are problems emotional problems dangerous mental problems and then only you can say <clears throat> examples these problems include depression anxiety memory loss because depression anxiety and memory loss would be mental problems emotional problems again can be some some of these things because both are related to brain inability to concentrate aggression these are the examples of problems and examples always come after you say that the topic was it difficult why have you messed this up this was easy these kind of questions do come in the exam and believe me they are the easiest ones because everything is well connected so make a habit that you mark the hints and then you train that okay however long term so i need to find out short term first these problems where is the introduction to problems and it is solved just two hints okay let's move on to reading blanks the first question for reading blanks two minutes and then post your answers
they should be done in a low carbon world renewable energy technologies are hot business for investors looking to redirect funds wind turbines and solar panels dash a straightforward choice so we are not reading this extra information this sentence says for investors looking to redirect fund means investors are the people who want to make investments so if we simplify the sentence they just want to say for people looking to make investments wind turbines and solar panels dash a straightforward choice means this is their straightforward choice so it should be the noun is plural wind turbines and solar panels are plural so we need a verb without s and what we have is seen only one first form of verb okay this these two things seem to be the straightforward choice means it's, it's a very easy option for them to invest in these things seen means look like but renewables need to be further scrutinized before being championed as dash a path toward a low carbon future so path toward means a path which is going and there is our goal low carbon future so path uh we need to scrutinize the renewables before being championed as dash a path so it will be before being championed as founding a path or what else do we have forging the path so we don't want to find a path rather we want to make a path forging means creating a path towards a low carbon future both the direct and indirect impacts of renewable energy dash be examined to ensure that a climate smart future does not intensify social and environmental harm so we need to ensure something both the impacts of renewable energy dash be examined will we say must be examined or would be examined we need to ensure something so we have to go with must forging is to because unless and until we must do it we cannot ensure anything this is not a possibility this is we have to do we have to examine the both direct and indirect impact so that we can make sure ensure is not about possibility it's a must do thing as renewable energy production requires land water and labor dash other inputs so we need these three things among other inputs among means along with out of the other thing these are the three things that we need that is how we use the word among uh then they say hydropower projects for instance have led to community dispossession and exclusion renewable energy supply chains are also dash with mining so with r comes ed form of verb and we have two ed forms connected and intertwined the difference between them connected comes with to and intertwined comes with with so we'll go with with here because after the blank we have with written intertwined means uh, done together with or they're somehow in relation to something or they also come with the other thing so that is how we use intertwined with mining and their technologies dash to growing levels of electronic waste and their technologies is plural so we need a verb without s and we only have one verb left contribute so we we'll go with this their technologies contribute to growing levels of electronic waste right so these are the answers first was this looks like the straightforward choice means there is not a lot of confusion that where they should invest their funds it's quite a straightforward option so it seem sorry they both seem the straightforward choice creating a path we don't found uh, or we don't find paths we make our path so it should be creating and when we have to ensure something we cannot say could would we have to do it must thing that is how we can ensure something and it requires land water and labor among other inputs because among always comes when you have a plural written after and the la second last one connected comes with two intertwined with with and technologies is plural so we need a verb without s technologies contribute to growing levels of waste right any confusions anybody in this question is it fine with all of you
So here is your second question. You have two minutes to solve it and post your answers.
or right should be done. Sports media producers have become dash to showcasing the most aggressive tackles and the most intense plays. So we all have seen this when we see any sports channel and there's a match, they keep on highlighting and repeating any arguments, any pushes or anything which is intense, anything, the aggressive behavior of a sports person. So sports media producers have become dash too. So what have they become? They have become accustomed to. Some of you have written familiar. Familiar comes with, with, familiar with something. Accustomed to means they have become used to. Showcasing the most aggressive tackles and most intense plays. NFL broadcasts often replay violent collisions. Dash the commentators marvel at the player's physical prowess. So this is a comparison that what do the broadcast show and what do the commentators point out at. So the broadcast often replay violent collisions while. So when we have two things, this person is doing this while the other is doing the other thing. So while the commentators marvel at the players. So while comes in between when you are making a comparison between two things. The next, the uh, sentence after the blank has a new subject. Commentators are doing something here. Broadcasts, we are having the information about broadcasts. Some sports highlights, television programs, even dash weekly countdowns of the hardest hits. So some sports highlights, they highlight the television programs, even dash weekly counts. So even feature display should be feature right so some sports highlights television programs even feature weekly countdowns let me check yes feature feature means they show weekly countdowns of the hardest hits so they are trying to say that when you have the highlights on the news channels they say 10 days left nine days left uh, or five days to go when there is a special match of the when you have a very hit match maybe the finals or semi-finals so they show the countdowns as well. How many weeks are left for that? When the media exalts such dangerous behavior, professionals are rewarded for injuring each other on the field and amateurs become more likely to try to imitate their favorite NFL athletes. Announcers, commentators, television producers, sports writers should engage in a collective effort to seize brutal plays. Seize means to stop these things. In turn, fans should stop expecting their favorite players to put their lives on the line for the dash of entertainment. So we should not expect our favorite players to put their life at risk, right? So we don't have at here, that's why we cannot go with risk. Uh, to put their lives on the line, which means the same at risk, for the dash of entertainment. And why do they do this? For the purposes of entertainment, this is solely for the purpose of entertainment that people will get entertained if we'll do something like this. Players must not be dashed to trade their careers. It becomes third form of work. We only have one. They should not be encouraged to trade their careers, their health, their happiness, and even their lives for the sake of a game. It's just for one game, they should not put their life at risk. We should never encourage such kind of behavior. What do encouragement mean here? If you are showing that player again and again on the screen, that means encouragement because everybody wants to have screen space. So if you will not show it, nobody will be motivated to do so. those things. That is why they're using the word encouraged here. Right, so these are the answers. Familiar comes with with and accustomed to means I used to. This, is, this has become a very um, normal thing. So they have become uh, accustomed to showing the aggressive plays. And uh, then we talked about the broadcasts replay this while the commentators point out this thing. So two different uh, things were happening in the same sentence. Third one, they feature weekly countdown. Features means they show weekly countdowns on their channels. And they should not put their lives on the line for the purpose of entertainment. How can you put reason? Reason is the, the background for which you do an action. So can we say they put their lives on the line for the reason of entertainment? For the purpose of, because they want to achieve this by putting their lives at risk. This is not the background, this is the future. So something which you have to achieve by your action is called purpose. For why are you doing this thing? What is your purpose of doing this? And if something is already behind, that is the reason, right? 
so um, for the purposes of entertainment and players must not be encouraged display is to actually um, for example when you go for an exhibition or you go to a, an art gallery there do you have the paintings and things on display means for anybody to come and watch them as such but when we talk about television so the shows are featured on television we don't display is not used in that context no purposes because there is not just one purpose in entertainment entertainment is a very broad term that's why it is for the purposes we we write purposes in this form for the purposes of something um unless and until it is a very exact thing we want to achieve then there's only one uh, purpose that we can write but entertainment is very broad so purposes is to earn more money to become famous to provide entertainment the lots of things that come under entertainment so that's why it should be purposes yes with b we can put ing form as well it depends upon active or passive voice um players must not be encouraging then that means players are encouraging and we are saying that we should not encourage the players players are not encouraging anyone so if we put ing the players it will become an active statement but it is a passive statement players must not be encouraged by us that's a passive statement right so here is question number 3 on the screen 2 minutes to post your answers for this
Okay, let's discuss the answers. In the late 1960s, while studying the northern elephant seal population dash the coasts of Mexico and California, these two people couldn't help but notice that the threat calls of males at some sites sounded dash from those of males at other sites. So they were uh, studying elephant seal population dash the coasts of Mexico. So coast of a country is a long stretch. Coast is where a uh, land and the sea meet. So that's a coastline that we have. And whenever there's something like a long movement, we use a long. We did it today only. And I am not understanding why I am seeing through as the answer. Through is when you cross something, when you pass something. Like we use the word through with through the tunnel. Because you cross and pass the tunnel. Through the waters. Because you go in the water and you pass it. Right? Along with comes with along. I am going to mark it along with my friend. That is the meaning of along with. Here along, I gave you two examples today, right? I go for a walk along the river. Did I say along with the river in that case? No. Along the river is side by side. In that case, you don't need with, with along. So these, they noticed that the threat calls of males at some sites sounded dash from those of males at other sites. So we have to say that the sounds of males at some sites the, they were dashed from those of males at the other side. So we are comparing two different sites. So what can we say? They were different because we cannot go with better or stronger because better and stronger come with than. And how do we know the sounds were stronger or the sounds were weaker or they were better or they were not better? Because that's piece of information. We can just say that, okay, these, these sounds are different than the other sounds. Unless and until there is a hint that those sounds were stronger or something. That was the first time dialects dash in a non-human animal. First time dialects were documented or dialects have documented. Have means dialects have done the work. But here dialects means just language differentiation. So language differentiations were documented in a non-human animal. That was the first time somebody found differentiations and wrote them. And the last one, they said it was precisely on the more recently colonized islands where this person found that the tempos of male vocal displays showed differences to the ones from the other colony. The sentence is absolutely complete. So what kind of differences were there? Better differences. Better is we want to say they were good. The second form of good is better. Or stronger differences. So we cannot say the differences were good or bad. But yes, we can say they were very much different. So we'll go with strong differences. So strong here is being used as a lot of differences, very much differences, not very minor differences. That is strong differences. Any confusions, anybody? This should have been correct. Note it down that it's not that along only comes with with. It can come without with as well when you're talking about a physical river, coast or something like that. Because in that case, it means side by side of something. Okay. The fourth and the last question for today, and you have two minutes to complete this.
good very well done this is done well do you realize that the government of china governing an empire of some 60 million people during the tang dynasty dashed a complex financial system that recognized grain coins and textiles as money so we are talking about past so we need past form of verb and we need a verb for financial system at that time they dashed a financial system and we have two options in past they provided a financial system or they implemented so provide is to give something they don't they did not provide it they implemented means they applied a financial system in which they recognized grain coins and textiles as money coins did have advantages and what are they they were durable they were recognizable and provided a medium of exchange so what kind of advantages are these we had two options um coins had certain advantages or some advantages so what is better what is more academic certain is better certain more goes when you want to say they were fixed things so these advantages were fixed they were durable they were recognizable and provided a medium of exchange what kind of medium of exchange can coins provide any adjective that we have we have convenient here however is not adjective therefore is not adjective available is not adjective enough medium of exchange but enough can be used with plural things so we'll go with convenient we don't have a choice and moreover advantages so convenient is a positive word as well so it matches especially for smaller transactions however there were also disadvantages a continuing shortage of shop copper meant that governments government mints could not produce dash coins for the entire empire so shortage of copper means there were not enough coins enough means the required level of something is called enough so they they could not produce enough coins for the entire empire to the extent that for most of the dynasty's history coins constituted only a tenth of the money supply and they say one of the main objection to calls for taxes to be paid in coin was that peasant producers who could weave cloth or grow grain the other two major currencies of the tang that would not be able to produce coins and dash would not be able to pay taxes so even if we just look at this part they not able to produce coins and dash not able to pay the taxes so they are connected if you are unable to pay coins then you will not be able to pay the taxes means we need to put therefore here because this is the reason for the next thing happening why are you not unable to pay the tax because you don't you are unable to produce coins and whenever the connection is because the connector is therefore always right so when the reason is given we either connected with because depends on the sentence structure if you need to put a connector it will be therefore if you want to put a conjunction it will be because right any confusions anybody in this particular question yes yeah, some and certain has same meaning in the only difference is some is very general there are some advantages certain means there are some fixed advantages so when something is more specified you go with certain over some convenient means a very uh, easy mode of something that is convenient like you said this road is convenient this route is convenient for me so convenient can be lot of terms convenient can be it has lesser traffic uh you are familiar with this road um or so these kind of things anything can be a reason of convenience means it's bit easier than the other thing so that's convenient what i am missing here is just picking answer not comparing with other options i read in two one and the answer is wrong prob i didn't get it but now i do it okay good 4 on 5 is a good score right okay so these were all the questions that we had to do today i hope you would have learned something and more importantly you would have noted a lot of things and you will be reading revising those things that you have learned right i'll see you tomorrow we have the last class for this week same time 6:30 pm according to sydney time and make sure that you are attending the classes regularly make sure that you are practicing regularly
and what else I can help you with. So those who don't have any doubts or questions, let's yes, you're free to leave. I'll see you tomorrow.